Worldwide, according to World Health Organization estimates, about 6 to 7 million people are infected with Chagas disease. personas tenemos la posibilidad de adquirir la enfermedad ¿sí? o la infección. Eh, hay un grupo de mayor riesgo que es la gente que vive en las zonas endémicas. ¿sí? Eso por un lado para las personas que pueden adquirir la enfermedad a través de la picadura. Pero los niños, la mayoría de los niños o los menores de 15 años han adquirido esta enfermedad de una mamá que transmitió durante el embarazo la infección y no se diagnosticó a tiempo para poder tratarse. Dr. Claudia Domínguez is a specialist for prenatal infections that are transmitted from mothers to their unborn children. The vivacious, dedicated doctor works in a public clinic, the Luis Carlos Lago Majora Hospital in Mendoza at the foot of the snow-capped Andes. The same named province in central western Argentina is one of the six regions in the country worst affected by Chagas disease. Chagas is considered primarily a classic vector transmitted disease. Referred to as Vinchucas in Latin America, the vector, a nocturnal blood sucking bed bug, transmits the causative agent of Chagas disease, the protozoa Trypanosoma cruzi. However, Dr. Dominguez frequently has to treat Chagas ill newborns who were infected through the placenta of their mothers. La vía congénita es la segunda vía de transmisión más importante que existe hoy en la enfermedad de Chagas y es la que se considera que en los próximos 50, 50 años será la vía, la forma de mantener la enfermedad de Chagas, lamentablemente, si no se logra combatir desde distintos eh, aspectos. Dr. Jaime Alche, a pediatric doctor and head of the Department for Parasitology and Chagas Disease at the Pediatric Hospital Ricardo Gutierrez in Buenos Aires, has spent most of his professional life researching Chagas disease in children. He even holds an almost radical theory. Nosotros pensamos y lo decimos siempre que el Chagas es una enfermedad pediátrica cuando uno ve un adulto infectado es un niño no tratado, porque en la historia natural la mayoría de las infecciones se producen en la infancia, tanto por vía transplacentaria congénita o por contacto con el vector. Dr. Ledesma Patiño, director of the Provincial Control Program for Vector-Borne Diseases and since 2005, director of the regional Chagas Center in Santiago del Estero, capital of the eponymous province, corroborates the views of his colleague Alche. The region in the far north of Argentina is, like Mendoza, one of the six provinces with the highest risk of infection by the disease. Dentro del contexto ese social, económico y cultural, el que más está expuesto en nuestra población son los niños. A tal punto que nuestro centro, que atesora hoy 27.000 historias clínicas, 3.500 de ellos son chagas agudos y el 83% son niños por debajo de los 9 años de edad. Lago Majora Hospital, where Dr. Dominguez works, offers free treatment, as do all other public hospitals in Argentina, regardless not only of where you live, but also of which country you come from. Consequently, patients will often travel for days on end from the deepest countryside or even from neighboring countries to get there. Many of them spend the night in the throng of the overcrowded waiting rooms. Here, in Argentina's second largest maternity ward, some 6,000 to 6,500 babies are born each year. In keeping with the guidelines of Argentina's National Chagas program, throughout the country all pregnant mothers, as indeed all blood donors too, are supposed to be examined prophylactically for Chagas. Effectively, the Lago Majora Hospital can boast a success rate of 90 to 95 percent. Some 5 percent of the examined women test positive for Chagas and, together with their children, are advised and treated by Dr. Dominguez. 
On her way to a house call, the doctor points out that her patient, Sabrina Luham, lives in an urban area in the center of Mendoza. Street after street are lined with colorfully painted houses and tiny gardens. All of them are fitted with strong security bars, padlocks and high fences against the constant threat of burglary. All over the country, criminality is flourishing in the wake of Argentina's ongoing poor economic situation. Since vinchucas generally don't occur in this area, Sabrina was completely bowled over by a Chagas diagnosis, especially as she'd had no symptoms. In customary Argentinian manner, she warmly greets Claudia Dominguez with a kiss on either cheek. While her mother is proudly showing her electric knitting machine and what she has made with it, Sabrina sits down with her son on a sturdy lathe chair in front of the lavishly decorative wall-to-wall -wall cupboard. No, no sabía. ¿Por qué a mí me había pasado eso? ¿Cómo me había contagiado? No, no sabía de dónde venía, eh, porque nunca había visto yo que me había picado la vinchuca. Así que con mi primera hija eh, no sabía yo que la podía contagiar a través del embarazo. Eh, así que ella nació y todo bien, todo normal, ella re bien. Eh, yo me vine a enterar de que lo podía contagiar a través del embarazo con él, porque él se contagió. It's the same story with almost all the women with Chagas infected children. No matter how much effort Argentina's national Chagas program puts into educational campaigns through posters, flyers, TV and radio spots, the population overwhelmingly ignores or turns a blind eye to the disease. The lethal transmission of the infection from mothers to their unborn children can be described as largely unknown. Sabrina's son has been treated for Chagas since his birth. Sabrina too began taking the same medicine because, in spite of the high risk, she had been hoping to have and now has had a third child, which is healthy. Dr. Alce suggests a possible reason. Y lo que demostramos es que las madres tratadas transmiten menos la infección que las madres no tratadas. Por lo cual nosotros ya es casi una rutina tratar hijos y sus madres. There are basically two medicines available for this treatment. One is benzidazole, originally developed in the early 1970s by Hoffmann La Roche and now produced by the Argentinian company Elea. The other is the substance Nifertimox, made by Bayer, which had already once been granted a license for treating Chagas disease under the trade name Lampit in 1967. Production was halted in 1997 due to insufficient demand, but resumed again in 2000 in consultation with the WHO. Ich denke, dass eben Pharmafirmen sehr oft kritisiert werden dafür, dass sie eben sich nur Krankheiten zuwenden von höher entwickelten Ländern. Und ich denke mir, dass man sich der Kritik oder Bayer sich der Kritik stellt und sagt, wir werden unseren Beitrag leisten. Das Bewusstsein, man muss der Gesellschaft, muss sich auch eben in solchen Gebieten auch engagieren, die, die vielleicht nicht unbedingt unser Main-Geschäft ist. Das hat in den letzten Jahren zugenommen und deswegen auch die Unterstützung für ein Projekt, was sicherlich nicht ein kommerziell attraktives Projekt ist. Trotzdem sagen wir, ja, wir müssen da Ressourcen einsetzen. Thus, since 2000, Bayer has been supporting the WHO with donated medicines, which since 2012 have amounted to 1 million Lampit tablets a year. 17-year-old Diana Ruiz is also supplied with this medication. During her pregnancy, the childlike, shy girl dropped out of school and has no plans to return. The long, monotonous drive to visit Diana takes the doctor down seemingly endless dirt roads. She repeatedly stops to ask directions, making sure she hasn't lost the way. Finally, she spots Diana with her little sister by the sluice of an irrigation ditch. A cold wind is sweeping grey clouds across the sky as Diana takes Dr. Dominguez along a long sandy track to the house of her parents-in-law. In European eyes, the flat building ringed by a fence cobbled together from irregular stakes rammed into the ground would look more like a rundown shack. In fact, it is in far better condition than many of the much older straw-roofed adobe houses with open windows and cracks in the walls that offer Vinchukas free access and perfect hiding places. Its earthquake-proof walls have been fully plastered on the outside. 
Its roof is at least partially lined with pan tiles and its windows are glazed. On the inside too, furnishings couldn't be more simple, but the house is clean, tidy and lovingly decorated with crushed doilies, photographs and effigies of the saints. Here Diana's family felt safe from Michukas and thus from Chagas disease. She herself had no idea she was Chagas positive or that her infection might represent a threat to her child. No le tomaron más porque mi familia, porque no sabía si le iba a hacer bien. Pues se enteraron que me dieron un, un remedio para ella y me dijeron que iba a estar bien, que se iba a recuperar. No, ahora están todo bien, por lo menos. Eh, es muy importante hacer el diagnóstico adecuado. ¿Sí? El diagnóstico, como decíamos, mientras más chico, más posibilidades de curarse. Mejor tolera la medicación el paciente. Por lo cual es el, el oro, la parte más importante para un médico pediatra, sobre todo, es diagnosticarlo. ¿sí? Y el niño se debe estudiar cuando nace. El hijo de una mamá con chagas se estudia al nacer y hacer controles periódicos por lo menos hasta el año de edad. Mientras más chico el niño, más posibilidades de curarse de la enfermedad con un tratamiento que es muy sencillo. En children, the diagnosis is fairly easy because the parasite is in the bloodstream. And so you take a blood sample, look at it under the microscope, and you can see the parasite you know, swimming around. Uh, in the older patient, the parasites are no longer in the blood, but they disappear from the blood and seem to find their way to organs like the stomach, like the intestine, like the liver, different parts of the body, and they hibernate there. They kind of sit there and develop problems in those organs. Lamentablemente no tenemos una formulación pediátrica actualmente adecuada porque lo que estamos logrando es fraccionar comprimidos de adultos para poder dárselos a los niños de una forma que en realidad no es la correcta o la adecuada. La posibilidad de utilizar una medicación que tenga una, formación, una formulación pediátrica es muy importante porque en el niño, desde el recién nacido hasta un niño que pese aproximadamente 40 kilos, la dosis se calcula por eh, kilogramo de peso. Por lo tanto, a veces el comprimido eh, de preparación para adultos eh, resulta muy difícil de eh, dar una medicación o ajustar la dosis adecuadamente al peso, sobre todo si se trata de recién nacidos, que su peso habitual es alrededor de los 3 kilos. For this reason, Bayer is currently developing a new formulation of Nifergimox tailored to children. The formulation that's approved is a 120 milligram tablet. Uh, for small babies, that's too high a dose. You couldn't give, her, give the person the whole tablet, so you'd have to break it probably in four pieces. When you break this tablet in four pieces, it breaks unevenly, and so the doses are inaccurate. And it's so important to give the accurate dosing because it minimizes the side effects and the problems that patients have. Indeed, the new pediatric formulation will contain just 30 mg of Nifergimox and will come as snap tablets, allowing it to be exactly halved. So, if required, the dose can be reduced to just 15 mg, the amount of the medicine that can be administered even to babies, especially neonates. Darüber hinaus ist die, äh, die Formulierung, die entwickeln, äh, ist eine Tablette, die schnell zerfällt in ein bisschen Wasser, sodass man dann eben wirklich auch Säuglingen die, die Formul oder das Medikament geben kann, weil, das weiß man, äh, feste Formulierungen können natürlich nur von Kindern ab einem bestimmten Alter überhaupt genommen werden, die überhaupt in der Lage sind, auch Tabletten zu schlucken. Inside the Ricardo Gutierrez Hospital in Buenos Aires is a wall covered with the colorful handprints of small children. Written underneath are the words Por la esperanza de los chicos For the hope of children All the specialists involved in the studies of the new children's formulation of Nifergimox expected to substantially boost these hopes. Dr. Alche, who is delighted to have just discharged a fully healed mother and her four Chagas-infected children, also sketches a highly optimistic view of the future. Si tratamos niños, no vamos a tener adultos Con secuelas. Indeed, this new formulation for children is now urgently awaited, since in Argentina alone some 1000 to 1500 children 
are born with a disease each year. With the migration of the rural population, especially of already infected mothers, the congenital form of the disease has now become the major cause of Chagas infections in Argentina's cities. But there is more to come. According to WHO estimates, in 2014 around 300,000 infected immigrants from Latin America lived in North America and around 120,000 in Europe already. A large proportion of them women of childbearing age, who can transfer Chagas to their children anytime and thus contribute to the further spread of the disease. So meanwhile, Dr. Claudia Dominguez repeatedly and with the utmost vehemence expressed demand holds true on a global scale. Los pilares fundamentales para poder erradicar la enfermedad están en el control de la mujer embarazada, volvemos a repetir, y de su hijo. El diagnóstico, como decíamos, mientras más chico, más posibilidades de curarse.